and welcome everyone to World Vegan Vision Mumbai and its first online conference in 2021. My name is Ruchika Chitrabhanu and I warmly welcome you all today for the series of Awakening Souls. World Vegan Vision is a global non-profit organization based in New York, USA founded by Harshad Shah and his wife Malti Shah. Namaste. I am Shankar Narayan, sitting on top of this pedestal in this dark night, misty, windy, cold, wintry night, in my own forest, trying to express my feelings, my journey, my views to all my friends in different parts of the world. This journey is it started about 30 years ago. This was in 1989 when I read Mahatma Gandhi's. My journey started in 1989 when I read Mahatma Gandhi's autobiography, My Experiment. Mahatma Gandhi had experimented with present day veganism or non drinking cows or buffalo milk, 1911. Taking a cue from his life, I stopped drinking milk without being aware of vegan movement or the word vegan. I was being part of the cruelty to cows by consuming other products of milk, though I stopped consuming milk in 1989. It continued for some more years. In 1993, I started Indian Vegetarian Association, thinking that vegetarianism is supreme and uh, I didn't have any concept of veganism known at that time. And uh, time passed, 2001, June 1, with the aware of veganism and availability of internet, I decided to go vegan on 1st June 2001. It's about 20 years ago now. Since then, the journey has been fabulous. It has been wonderful. Now, after 20 years of my vegan journey, I am here sitting on this platform speaking with you. What's the purpose? The purpose, I've seen a lot of suffering. I've seen myself with this body through these eyes. I've experienced myself suffering and I've seen the thing of humans and animals. Having seen this, the pain is very painful to endure for me, for you, for everyone. I wish there was, there, this world was painless. If this world was painless, I would not have done much to reduce the pain because there is no pain. The pain is very difficult to suffer for anyone. I have suffered myself. Having endured my own suffering, I could easily understand the suffering of others, both humans and animals. Therefore, I started in my journey first by not consuming animal products, then helping others come on this journey. I've been working in various capacities, various ways. I started Indian Vegan Society in 2004. Then for some reason in 2014, I changed the name to Satvik Vegan Society. I started this uh, forest in 2009 
I'm ever since living in this forest. This is dark all over here. For four years, I was living without electricity. There was no public transport. Uh, it was uh, an experiment for me. Today, I have electricity. Though the sky is dark behind, I am able to um, arrange this studio to present before you. So all this has been a, a, a very deep uh, life for me with a lot of exper experiences, a lot of knowledge, a lot of understanding. My main motto when I started this journey was to reduce the suffering, reduce the suffering of everyone. I don't discriminate between animals and humans because everyone can feel the suffering, everyone can experience that. So if it is difficult for humans to endure that, it is difficult for animals also. They may not speak our language, they may not speak the words we use, but they have the same feeling, the pain and pleasure. They need to be respected, they need to be given space to live in this world because they are all the same, they are all the creatures created by the same God who created us. Therefore, we share the earth, it is not our own soul earth. For this reason, I wanted to do something. I've been uh, in this journey for this long. I continue to continue this journey and my activism or my activities to spread the knowledge to others. Along this journey, I learned something which made me change the name of Indian Vegan Society to Satvik Vegan Society. I'll uh, talk a little bit about that. That's the topic for me to speak. Satvik life, vegan diet. If you are a Satvik or spiritual person, you need to eat vegan food. That is most. If you are a vegan, if you are on a, on a vegan diet, you need to be a Satvik person. That's again a request to vegans. This book, Satvik and Vegan go together. I'll explain you further about that. We tell you about what is vegan. Vegan is an English word taken from the word vegetarian, making the word with the help of first three letters and last two letters of the word vegetarian. The word was reduced, but the meaning was expanded. It was brought in to correct the corruption or perversion of vegetarianism. Vegetarianism was originally veganism. In fact, Pythagoras was a fruitarian. With this background, vegetarian has to be vegan. But vegetarians for convenience or for their own reasons, even I was a vegetarian by birth for my uh, first uh, 35 years of my life, I was a lacto-vegetarian. Therefore, I have equal respect for vegetarians as I have respect for vegans or non-vegans. But vegetarians have been using milk for their own reasons, convenience or health or whatever reasons. But vegetarian is not vegetarian if it is not vegan. It has to be vegan. That was the original intention. When vegetarians shifted from vegetarian society to form the vegan society, they called themselves as dairy-free vegetarians. The vegan has vegetarian, vegetarian has vegan. So both go together. In present condition, vegan is living without eating any animal products. That means eating 100% plant food. And the same reason we use for not using plant animal products, we use for other activities also. This is logical extension of veganism. 
if we confine our principle, ahimsa principle or whatever we practice, if we confine only for diet, it won't be complete. We have to extend to whole of our life. So that, that is the vegan principle. Practicing the principle of ahimsa or non-violence in our diet and in all aspects of our life is veganism. What is sattvic? Common perception about sattvic is it's, not, it's about not consuming onions and garlics. Many people told me that. Of course, sattvic people don't use onions and garlics, traditional sattvic people, because it is not good for our body and mind. But my sattvic is not about onion and garlic. It's not about deep understanding of our ancient scriptures. Because we have a lot of information, very useful information in Vedas, Upanishads, Puranas, Bhagavad Gita and so many ancient valuable scriptures. We have a lot of information. But my sattvic life is not about understanding all those huge amount of information available in those scriptures. It is not about superiority also. I don't consider anyone superior or inferior in this. It's a journey. It is not about my own way of living also. So what I preach is something lesser than what I practice. Whatever I practice, I don't expect from others. But if someone practices or make an attempt to practice what I have been doing, it is very, very useful. As I said, the world is suffering. There is hardly anyone who can say that I am really happy. I, am, I don't have anything to accomplish. I don't have anything to do. I am truly contented. Because people have a lot of sufferings, a lot of problems. If you go and touch someone's heart, it's completely wet with tears. People suffer a lot. Why they suffer? If you investigate, there is a direct link. Knowingly or unknowingly, people are part of the suffering in this world. They're part of the suffering of other humans. They're part of the suffering of billions of animals which are killed every year for our use. They are part of the suffering of this Mother Earth. Our own mother, we call, we are part of this Earth. We have come, we have come from this Earth. We will go back to this Earth. Hmm. The Earth is our mother. But we are making it degraded or suffering day by day with our lifestyle, with our activities, knowingly or unknowingly. Therefore, this sattvic life and vegan diet we need to practice as far as possible and practice possible. It is about learning and practicing from herbivore animals. So my guru, spiritual guru is Mahatma Gandhi. But I learned a lot of things from animals, particularly those who are in the wild. How to live a happy and healthy life. Therefore, my sattvic veganism is directly influenced by the living of herbivore animals. Animals in general, but herbivore animals in particular. This name I derived from something very unusual, you can say. In our culture, in our rural setup or in villages, people call a person who is calm and quiet, who is peaceful, who is harmless, who is like a, an ordinary or peaceful herbivore animal. That person is called a sadhvik person. If you are harmless, peaceful, if you don't do any harm to others, or if you don't get angry, if you are easily approachable, you speak polite language, then 
you are called a sattvic person this is in folklore people addressing it's a sattvic person that is people how address a peaceful person i took this word this usage to my sattvic vegan society because a vegan who eats a peaceful food without violence should be peaceful himself or herself a person who is sattvic in all other ways with a good language polite behavior simple living he should eat vegan food otherwise it will be a treachery of the principle that is not right thing therefore my sattvic is about herbivore animals and a person who lives like a herbivore animal now let me briefly express qualities of a sattvic vegan or a sattvic person or herbivore animal as i said my veganism though i came to know of this through internet from vegan movement outside i am directly influenced by herbivore animals so all these principles which i practice are taken from herbivore animals and improvise with our civilization with our language with our technology with all the facilities we have so let me analyze the behavior of animals which help me come this way they eat the natural diet herbivore animals eat the natural diet meant for them i am also on a raw diet as far as possible practical so they don't cook they don't eat add salt they don't do anything whether it is any food even carnivore animals don't cook they eat food which they consider food as it is without spicing it up they follow nature's law in other aspects of life also they sleep when they feel like they don't uh, stress themselves so much they don't work so hard to accumulate they are connected to earth follow natural instincts they're totally grounded they live the life the way the nature or the god intended them to live they don't have any artificiality they are very peaceful that is the nature of this earth so we need to learn from them they can be trusted and they trust others i think i have very few minutes left i'll be going through my points very quickly they are harmless practice ahimsa in a practical way they are harmless even a poisonous snake in my forest i have been living in this forest for 11 years i have seen king cobra i have seen crates i have seen many poisonous snakes here they won't come and chase me they won't come and bite me unless i do some harm intentionally or unintentionally therefore they can be trusted they have a pattern in their life we don't have to look at them suspiciously so they trust us they can be trusted too they have calm and peaceful mind this is very important for us also we are disturbed we can't sleep we can't live a peaceful life in spite of living so long civilized life we couldn't find happiness we couldn't find a perfect formula for our happiness but they in spite of all the problems in spite of all the problems they have calm and peaceful mind they are contented in their life they forgive and forget they don't have any grudges they live in the present and do not worry about future they are active always they don't they are not lazy they don't idle away their time they are active in spite of being active they are not destructive they are so productive for themselves and complementing to the health of the earth they adapt to changes we may create so many problems for them whether it is cutting the forest or confining them or doing all the atrocities but still 
they are adapting to changes and still surviving to show us the way forward. They are adventurous too, in spite of their limitations as to their thinking ability. But they don't limit their ability to just to feed themselves. They are very active, they are very creative, they are very productive, and they are very interesting to observe. They are fearless. Other day I was watching a video. A goat was tackling a bull. A dog was tackling a lion. Because they are fearless. They don't have anything to lose. And they are happy and stable-minded. Sthita Prajna is the name of my forest. I took it from Bhagavad Gita meaning stable mind or mind fixed in God. Therefore, Sthita Prajna is very important for us to be healthy and happy living. Animals are natural Sthita Prajnas. They don't get disturbed in spite of all the problems we create. They are always happy, happy in the sense stable-minded. They don't cry so much in spite of all the cruelties we do. And uh, finally, one more point about positive about them is they are self-dependent. They are not dependent on maids or servants or helpers or this one, that one. They mostly do their activities independently and self-sufficiently. All these I have learned from them and practicing here as much as possible in my forest. And there are some more points which they don't do. These are also very important. They are not jealous of others. They don't have any evil mind. They are not insecure of, insecure of others. They are not having insecurity about tomorrow also. We worry so much. We accumulate all the wealth throughout life, even not using them for our own well-being. But they don't do that. They live in the present. They don't feel insecure at all in spite of all the insecurity they might have. They do not blame others. Even if you decode their language, they do not blame others. Whatever coming their way, they accept as it is. They do not get angry or have grudge. They may get angry temporarily to protect themselves sometimes. But most of the time, they never get angry. They, even if you do some harm to them, they get away from us. They don't retaliate or harm to others. Forget about having grudge or long-term enmity with us. They do not hold or be rich. They work hard every day just to get their food. But they don't accumulate it and want to be rich. So we are accumulating and we, re we are really poor in front of them. They don't accumulate anything, but they are very, very rich, according to me. So I am also like that. I am very rich when compared to animals. They do not form groups and protest and disturb the ecosystem. They can have so many issues to protest. But they won't protest. They endure all the sufferings. They're not attached to their family or friends so much. Even in Bhagavad Gita, it says so in 13th chapter, a sadhaka or sthita parajna or achiever need to be detached from the family bondings or leaving the groups, all these things. They do not harm others or the environment. They are very peaceful. I told you, I gave the example of a snake or a lion or any carnivore animal. They are in a way balanced. Even a carnivore animal eats a herbivore animal when that animal cannot protect itself, when the animal cannot run, when they cannot eat it, or it needs some support as we get support from a hospital. Therefore, the Carnivore animal is a doctor in a way for herbivore animals. 
it cures its pain and suffering. They do not steal, even in our uh, spiritual values. This is not right. Ahimsa Satyaste Brahmacharya Parigraha. Yamani Masana Pranayam Pratyahara Dharana Dhyana Samadhi. If you study all these Ashtanga Yogas, you will know this is first one of the first principles we should practice non stealing. Animals never steal. They take what they want and leave all other things without disturbing. They do not have boundaries. We create our own boundaries. I'm giving examples of herbivore animals. There are carnivore animals who have who set their boundaries, but herbivore animals don't set any boundaries. They live wherever possible, wherever they're allowed. I've seen people confining cows with the two ropes without being able to move anywhere. But they live their life. They don't end their life. They don't go for suicide. They just be there without any boundaries. They do not confine other animals also. They, even if they are confined, endure that, but they won't confine other animals like we do. All the animals who are killed, about 8 billion animals according to statistics, were killed every year for human food and other, are in confinement. They don't have any natural semblance of life. They suffer a lot. This we vegans understand. Many people don't understand this. Other day I was in a college. I was talking to uh, students, talking about milk. They should not confine animals. But they say, uh, someone said, they are in fact helping the animal by confining them. This is the distortion of our education. Our education doesn't give the true picture to people. So we, confinement is confiscating of freedom. We vegans also, this topic is uh, meet with the awakened people. I need to urge vegans also to consider thinking about the animals they confine. I've seen in the houses of vegans, animals suffering. Why dogs escape? This is a very deep question. I have seen so many advertisements on social media, even in newspapers. My dog escaped. The person who gets it will get one lakh rupee bonus, one lakh rupee reward. If I were a dog, I would escape 100 times. I don't want to be a property of someone. I don't want to be confined somewhere. If I were a dog, I would think like that. Probably a dog thinks like that. It wants freedom. It wants to live with its clans. It wants to live with its type of people, its species, or his or her species. Even uh, calling a dog, it is not acceptable to me. Sometimes by habit, it comes to my mouth. Sorry for that. A dog needs to get freedom, needs to get its natural diet, whatever. We need not hunt an animal and feed it, but if it can feed itself or himself or herself, dog should get its natural diet. Therefore, confinement, this is a very special point I have included for today's session. I didn't want to bring it up in other forums because if an awakened person can't understand the plight of dogs as Okay, we may consider a dog a family member. Will a dog consider humans as family members? I don't think so. They have their own family. They do not dress up like we do to show false images. Animals won't wear any dress. They're in their natural dress. They don't dress up like us. We don't have to show what is not natural to us. I have gray hair. This is natural. I don't have to color it. Of course, I wear minimum clothes when here, when travel, but not for luxury. It is just for covering myself against the extreme weather and being acceptable to society. This way, animals have a lot of things 
which we can learn from they do not use foul language and fight with others another sensitive issue for me i have seen a lot of foul language is being used in social media by people advocating a noble cause like veganism that shouldn't be happening if you are doing good it journey has to be good also we should use good language polite behavior and take the message forward they do not cheat others and finally they do not chase success animals are not behind success we humans are behind success we want to be successful we want to make name we want to achieve so many things but they are not after all those things they are just happy with keeping their body alive and active so with this i conclude and uh, as a final final parting uh, sentence all these features or special characteristics of animals i have observed and learned and i have been practicing as far as possible and practical even veganism uh, with that rider comes and uh, my life also like that i have been striving to live like animal as far as possible and practical herbivore animal and uh, if i live any longer uh, i would like to live more like an animal if someone calls me an animal i'll be happy thank you if you learn some traits from animals that's great thank you very much